Hello and welcome to Bradis MTG. My name is Vyacheslav and today I show you nine important magic cards. I mean important for me because this card is like uh, milestones in my magic player career. Uh, I must tell you before we start that uh, I started to play magic in 2011. So just few of these cards are legal in pre-modern and most of them don't legal in old school. So be careful, you can see the new bordered cards. But for me they are very important because it was my nostalgia <laughs> section. So let's start from first one. It's a Greed from 7th edition. For, for one enchantment, pay black, pay to life, draw a card. With uh, some uh, western paladin that <laughs> laying on the pile of gold in artwork. Fine cards. Uh, Greed is playable in old school, but not playable in the any modern format. It was my first rare in booster pack. In booster pack of 7th edition. I start magic from uh, 7th edition starter that have two decks, blue and white and red and green. And I really fast understand that this is starter deck and it have not fifth color of magic, black. So black is not for starter <laughs> level, it's for advanced players. Yeah. So I was so happy, I was so happy when I opened in my booster pack the advanced color rare. Uh, but sadly, after a few months 8th edition was released, I buy one or two booster packs, open it and uh, for some time I dropped magic because, you know, new border, nobody will buy uh, this game now and it will die soon. But after five or six years, I'm not really sure uh, what spirit was uh, when I bought the 7th edition booster. But when uh, Lorien was released, I am uh, returned. I uh, visit my local game store, Sargona, to buy some D&D stuff. And it has a discount for magic, so I buy a starter and give a second chance to the game. After this, uh, I of course played with bad decks, built some weird builds, but uh, at the same moment I want to play competitive and I choose deck that I want to use. And the deck had uh, Bitter Blossom, really fine rare enchantment. Tribal, it's fairy, it's enchantment for 2 mana and at the beginning of your upkeep you lose 1 life and put into play 1-1 one, one flying fairy or token. A really cool card. It's, it's played in uh, at least two tier one decks in this format. It's fairies and black and white tokens. I have bought, but I try to you know play more with fairies because I want to learn how to counter spells. <laughs> it was control deck with control magic. I want to learn how to just play better. Sadly, even the last event that I played with fairies. I remember that I won it, it was fun because I have specific cards, but even at the moment that I won the last standard event with fairies that I played and that we have in our club, uh, I had not uh, finished my deck yet. I have like only two copies of that Seas, not play set. But anyway, it was a good experience for me. I learned, I repeat, I learned how to counter spell. I learned the price of the cards, like I understand what, why that is so powerful. Yeah, stuff like this. It was fun. Of course, and Bitter Blossom also a really beautiful card. Look at this artwork. It's uh, like dark uh, morning type fairy tale. Fine. I played with fairies, competitive deck, but still, as uh, many other uh, new players <laughs> of this year, I tried to build some uh, specific builds for rocky events and for fun play. In fun games, we use, uh, I think, all cards that we can find without any format. But uh, once I built uh, something strange, but playable for standard. It was fun. It was built around Warp World. Enchantment. Oh, sorry, it's sorcery. Sorcery for 8 mana. It's red spell with a lot of text. <laughs> Never read it. <laughs> Just dropped a pile, but red spell with a lot of text. That uh, tell oh, each player shuffles all permanents he or she owns into his or her library. When uh, put cards from top deck, if it permanent, put it into play. If it spell, shuffle back. And it's actually all effect of the card. But, uh, you know, my strategy was very simple. Opponent play like one permanent per turn, two permanents per turn, some land, creature and all. But we will play more. We will play some tokens, token producers like Zijigan Commander, ramp to find more lands because lands are still permanents. And then we ramp to eight, play uh, Warp World, opponent shuffle a few permanents and put into play a few other permanents. We put into play our token producers or Bogger than hill kites. So with this deck you sometimes can won by one turn to put when you put into play a few hill kites, like in Dragon Storm and Past, right? But uh, mostly you just gain uh, after the result of spell advantage. You deal damage with one hill kite or two, you have a lot of Zigank or other permanents, and your opponent would have lesser. And you even can play Warp World after. 
<laughs> it was I, I don't want events with this but I won games and uh, I, I think I won rock event but in competitive uh, part I play just to two maybe or to one not sure but uh, <laughs> it's so fun interesting moment that uh, when I start thinking how to make it better to one the event I go to home uh, go to internet and this deck was really existed before it was not so popular not so successful but some people won the events and uh, at this moment I understand that I can build something that other people can build to win the games so it was a reason to uh, you know proud <laughs> by myself at the same time in St. Petersburg we start to play a legacy format and uh, finally in legacy <laughs> I can play the black deck mono black deck I'm not sure it was uh, good or not, but I, in web I found some mono black lists for Legacy at this era in 2011 or in 2012 and it was look close to old school mono black. Only better removals of course and some tutsis, but and hints. Oh, hymns is legal in most of old school formats, but anyway. So I tried to build this deck. Some cards I found like hymns and uh, rituals, some not. <laughs> but uh, after release of the Indy card set, deck becomes uh, slightly better. I don't even think that uh, it's uh, get new name, the gate, because main mechanic was first one, it's a uh, gatekeeper of Molokir. It's a really cool vampire creature for two black, two two, with kicker. Paid kicker, when gatekeeper comes to play, your opponent sacrifice creature. So it's like edict, uh, fine effect, and it's body in the table. Really cool. Best way to kill the Thermogoyf <laughs> and this era. And, uh, also some new vampires and uh, demon uh, abyssal persecutor he's for four mana six six flying but you can't want the game you need to kill him so you can kill him by gatekeeper and gatekeeper yeah it's a main card of the deck it's gate gatekeeper <laughs> you understand i think uh it was fun moment but uh, i think slightly later i dropped the legacy maybe after the instant release i'm not sure but uh, oh, it was fine time <laughs> Of course, uh, not only casual uh, constructed 60 cards decks was a uh, way too fun. We also start play Elder Dragon Highlander at some moment, and my first general was Zuru's Enchancer. <laughs> He's really cool and playable right now. For four mana, three colors you have flying, one four, and his attacks you can find, you can search your library for enchantment that cost three or less. So you can find the Bitter Blossom, Arena, Necropotence different uh, powerful enchantments uh, we don't play it too competitive i'm pretty sure that at the time we even have not uh, stuff like competitive elder dragon highlander and uh, my deck was really casual i have a lot of funny enchantments once as i remember we played multiplayer game in the five or six hours and after this somebody successfully <laughs> resolves our fault and i go to the home maybe <laughs> or, or for the beer because it was too hard for me uh it was fine maybe if i will return to old dragon highlander oh no i will not use <laughs> as well, of course and yeah it's uh, this one is a reprint foil with the old border my version of course was not this one all this card is not my original card <laughs> i lost them all time ago it was fun times with fun decks but uh, after this uh, i also vi visit my first big competitive event before i played competitive events in the store yeah it's like 20 up up to 20 persons mostly not so many players and uh, not so you know hard atmosphere but uh, after release of zendikar some sets of it i visit the maybe it was russian championship national i'm not sure i don't remember right now yes i remember it was national and at this moment i used the competitive deck with uh jay the mind sculptor <laughs> yeah it's a legendary plant smoker <laughs> yeah for four mana with uh, cool abilities like fate steel brainstorm and some guys and uh, ultimate really powerful he was so man person by one side jay slightly breaks the format because uh, i used the uh, blue and white to power control and with the game have like three decks but but most of them was the blue and white controls and it was not so fun standard metagame but jay's become really man person it was songs about jay's comics uh, memes so i'm pretty sure anyone who played uh, this season <laughs> still remember jay's and you can see this version is not from original set it's from uh, from Zvol 20 it's uh, too important set for me at least because 
I'm pretty sure that this was the first time that Wizards of the Coast directly sell cards to players. Yeah, it was set with 15 cards. And I don't know how it works in uh, any other countries, but in Russia nobody sells it by MSRP. Yeah, uh, it must cost like uh, maybe 20 euros, but people sell it, I mean stores sell it for 40, 60, even 400. Because Jays, because some other reprints, it's... I think I dropped the standard after one year uh, from the this national play it's so modern, but uh, like a lot of years I just don't play it magic no, uh, many times. When I start, I can play a lot of time. I play it like four events per week. It's uh, too much, I think, <laughs> you know. But uh, after the this national, after some changes in my life. I start work on a card store and at the same time I don't drop magic but I play it like one even per week, two even per week and, and mostly for, for a few years it was just limited because standard looks like not so fun as before and uh, modern legacy is the same but uh, I think in year 2019 maybe I returned to some competitive constructed play yeah it was maybe some modern championship or Pepit cool, I'm not sure, and I played like two months or three really hard with Affinity, card that have the cranial plating inside. Artifact for two, equipment, equipment cache you get plus one, plus zero for artifact you control, and for two black you can attach it on instant speed for one color is on sorcery. It's one of the main win cons for deck. Like you can uh, make big attack or big attack with cache with infect. It's a uh, Fine. Affinity was... I liked the deck. It was too aggressive. You can start from Mox, land, land, little creatures, and run just uh, one on the in next two turns. Of course, people use hate cards against it, and uh, sometimes you have bad hands. <laughs> yeah, even after mulligans, it's uh, this deck have the hard mulligans to really fast start. But uh, it was really fun. I played a lot of regular events like Red Knight Magic or some constructed. But when I go to this pip I think, and I lost it uh, really terribly, <laughs> like uh, zero two drop maybe. I'm not sure. I remember this was problematic. And next to I played with storm deck. But uh, this plaything for me like uh, moment that I returned to some constructed play. Uh, after modern, I even tried to return to standard, but not uh, uh, like, but not for very regular play. I use few stage decks, but when uh, standard metagame was broken. It was Age of Energy when uh, I play it a lot of time in Magic Online, like two or three times per week at this moment. And you go to Magic Online, play events that have five rounds, and four of them is against energy. Uh, slightly boring, right? But uh, at the same moment, it was released funny <laughs> for, for me at least. Budget black deck. The deck has the Night Market lockout inside. It's creature for black mana. Uh, one one, when he become tapped, each opponent lose life and you gain life. And deck was built around the cycles, the hype, uh, around cars. <laughs> okay, this uh, artifacts that can be animated by tap some creatures. So in this deck, this guy not only can go to attack to two, uh, actually, but also can be used like pinger. You just tap it to animate car, and uh, you can even go, don't go to attack or block. You can just shoot the opponent. It was fine. This deck was budget for a moment because it cost like $50 maybe. And uh, it even uh, started to become popular at some moment because I remember that I played a few events in the week and I play against energies and monoblacks <laughs> mirrors and nothing more. I even play, write some article in Russian about this deck. It was very fine, really interesting for me because Again, I have a good experience by playing budget deck. Maybe it's a reason that I start to love budget decks again, because Fairies or uh, any modern deck to use was not budget. This one, pretty <laughs> cheap. And last important card for me. Uh, at some moment I dropped standard 2, and I don't was interested in limited. And I think that I will not play Magic more, but I still like to watch the cards. And uh, one moment I read the article, about the old school magic, you know, old school, 93-94. And after this I go to the 93-94 block, uh, on old school magic block, I think it's named, on Blogspot, and I read a lot of articles by Magnus. And I start to like the format. And it was sad because, you know, I have not any old cards, but 
I also subscribe to Oldschool MTG Instagram account, watch the Oldschool cards each day, every day, and at the same moment I think, oh, it's time to buy a few Oldschool Magic cards. I buy Sierra Angel, some Unlimited stuff, uh, not so many. And I think I was, uh, t told to you how I started to play Magic, we built two 40 cards deck for me and my wife. I was to play old school magic, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to, to chip decks, and then uh, I start to buy more cards and slightly yeah. more, <laughs> you know how it works. And I can't put into this group of cards any old school card because I use old school cards in my deck. But I can put card that uh, at the same time looks like old school but not legal in any old school format. It's a uh, Tis Black Knight. I think it's Friday Night Magic promo. His you can see foil, this eye with different. Uh, flower text. Uh, not so bad, but actually I like more the flower text of uh, original Black Knight from Alpha Beta Unlimited Revised. Uh, it's Black Knight, I think you understand, because why? Because uh, I still like Black, I try to play Black decks <laughs> as regular as possible. I like Black Knight. I really like moments when my creature can't be sworded, yeah, <laughs> and can't be blocked by Sarah Angel. So it is my nine important magic cards. I really found that you can uh, describe it's uh, like 15 years of your life by this little pile, right? But uh, in some way it's work. It helped me to, you know, travel back to the past and uh, remember some funny moments that I had. Thank you for the watching up to the end. If you like this video, please support me by leaving a comment, press the like button or subscribe to the channel. Also, you can join my Patreon or become a channel member, stuff like this. <laughs> and thank you again. Have a nice games and have a nice day. Bye.